you or someone you love needs help for an addiction, where do you turn? Foundations Recovery Network offers individualized treatment for the whole person. Our goal goes beyond short-term sobriety. We address substance abuse and co-occurring mental health issues together, providing a firm foundation for long-term recovery. The first step is often the hardest, but we're here with a free assessment, insurance information, and treatment options. Our confidential helpline is available 24-7, so call 877-714-1318 and discover the Foundation's Recovery Network difference today. This is Rich Roll, and you're listening to Silver Guy Radio. Yo, what's up? Thank you for tuning in today. Thanks to Humans for bringing us in. Thanks to you for supporting the show. Uh, be sure to check us out at thatsoberguy.com for past episodes, resources. Uh, you can also connect with us on Instagram at Real That Sober Guy and on Twitter at Shane Raymond. Uh, if you're listening to this via iTunes, Spotify, or any of the other hundreds of podcast platforms, I I was browsing around the other day and I noticed, damn, there is a shitload, shitload, shipload, shitload of podcast platforms, which is a pretty amazing thing. So you got tons of options out there. Uh, But if you want to watch the show, instead of just listening to the show, you got both options now. You can see some video of my ugly ass mug all up in your nice, beautiful mug. On some video action, so you can go to youtube.com slash that sober guy podcast. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. I didn't do a very good job of building the YouTube platform uh, when I started Sober Guy, so I think I'm a little behind the curve on that. But better late than pregnant, right? So we're going to keep moving forward and uh, put some video out. I'm having some fun doing that. And uh, hopefully y'all are enjoying that too. Y'all, the hell, y'all, y'all are enjoying that. I ain't hating on anybody that says y'all, by the way, but y'all, y'all, I'm from Cali, son. I'm not from Texas. Although I'd like to go to Texas. I hear Texas is an amazing place. I stopped on a runway in Dallas. That is the closest. Wait, that didn't make sense. I stopped on a runway. I stopped in Dallas in a terminal, um, and then we took off on the runway. That would make sense, right? You dumb fuck. (laughs) Check us out on YouTube. Love it if you did that. You can also check out the new TSG merch store. We have men's shirts. We have shirts for the ladies. What's up, ladies? Who you calling ho? I ain't no ho. Oops. I'm so Okay, I'm not even going to say it. You ever seen Boys in the Hood? One of my favorite parts, funny, absolutely um, amazing movie. Yeah, some com- some comedy parts, but some real life shit that was going on in the '90s there too, man. Damn, I love how they laid it out. But just reminded me of a scene in that when when Ice Cube is walking through. Well, he Ice Cube in the movie, but what's his name again in the movie? I totally forgot. Totally drawing a blank right now. I'm thinking a menace to society, and at the same time, I'm drawing boys in the hood in there. Um, well, he was Doughboy, right? Yeah, he was Doughboy. That's what it was. I know as a kid. Uh, anyways, he's walking through the barbecue line. They're having a cookout. They're doing the cookout. and some, one, of the, one of the females said something, and he said, uh, oops, I'm sorry, ho. And she said, who are you calling ho? I ain't no ho. And he said, I'm sorry, bitch. And I went, oh, damn, that was rude. What a dick. You can't speak to the ladies like that. You can't speak to the hoes like that. <laughs> oh, man, where am I going with this? Anyways, we got, we got that sober guy. Shirts, coffee mugs, got some hoodies on there. Uh, help support us. Support your recovery. Rock your sober guy gear. Represent. You can get your TSG merch today at thatsoberguy.com. You can go there and click on the store tab. And... uh It'll take you over there, and you can check it out. And we love, uh, we love your support. We thank you guys. Thank you for listening to the show. Um, thank you for talking about recovery. Thank you for, um, you know, having an open community that uh, that that speaks openly, that supports each other, all that good stuff. Uh, you know, I don't talk about it often enough, probably too. We also have a Facebook group. It's a private Facebook group, uh, but. 
but you can uh, anyone can can join. Of course, we would we would like it if you're in recovery or connected to it, even codependency, that kind of stuff. Uh, but that's what it's there for is to connect and support each other. Uh, so if you go to Facebook, uh, you can just type in sober guy or that sober guy, and uh, you should be able to find the group on there. I think there's over 600 people in there. So there's a good little group of people. It's pretty active uh, from, from my understanding. Uh, my mom, uh, Darcy, thank you to her. And of course, the Jess, my lovely wife, um, they're both involved in uh, in in helping out with that with the uh, private Facebook group as well as Cormick all the way out in Ireland. I know he's posting some stuff in there every now and again, so I appreciate that Cormick. And then of course, Buddy C um, is is in there networking a little bit with other podcasts, the Share Podcast. Uh, Buddy just launched a new podcast himself through the Share platform. Um, it's a Dow podcast, and um, I think he has a, a weekly meeting uh, every Thursday. Early, early morning, uh, being that he's on the East Coast, so it's a little different uh, timing for me, so I haven't got to jump into one of those yet, but um, you can check any of those out in the private Sober Guy, Sober Girl Facebook group, so be sure to go over there and, uh, and check that out. All right, how to reach out for help. I thought that this would be an interesting topic to briefly touch on today uh, and just and talk a little bit about an experience I've had in the last couple of days. Um, you know, one of my good homeboys who I've known for a long, long time. Uh, and, and I'm going to of course keep his, um, anonymity, you know, respect that. And I'm not going to obviously say who it is, but just a, a good friend of mine who I got mad love for. And, uh, you know, we, we partied like some straight party boys back in the day. And, uh, you know, he, he hit me up recently and he said, Hey bro, you know, let's, uh, I hadn't talked to him in a while either, you know, here and there, um, you know, we'd run into each other, but, uh, you know, that when I got sober, a lot of relationships changed. And, uh, and I know those of you who are, are in sobriety and who are working a recovery program who are, who have been in it for a minute, understand that, uh, you know, that, that you got to, you got to step away from certain situations and uh, be very aware of the environments and the situations that you're putting yourself in. And so that was something that I had to do very, uh, very early on when I got home from rehab in order to put a stake in the ground and say, I'm not going back to that shit. And I don't care what I have to do to do that. Now, it didn't mean that I intentionally wanted to, I just, it looks like I got a turtleneck on right now, doesn't it? I'm just all zipped up right now because it's cold, but, oh, man, yeah, turtleneck. I'm going to have to get a dicky like Cousin Eddie in Christmas Vacation. That'd be legit right there. He's got the white V-neck with the black dicky underneath. Oh, man, that's just superb. I love that. Anyways, what the fuck was I talking about? Um, it wasn't my intention to get, you know, to alienate my, my friends or some of them were good friends. Some of them were acquaintances. Some of them were, were my party homies. Like, you know, there's all different groups of people and, and, and places that we'd go and, um, you know, different, different, uh, different groups, I guess. And in order for me to sustain being able to stay sober, I had to get my ass out of a lot of those situations and, and, and being around a lot of those people, you know, the easy thing to do also is to say, I can't hang around those people because they make me do this or they, you know, I always make bad decisions when I'm around them. Well, at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter what they do. I can't control them. I'm not in charge of what they do, of how they act, of anything going on in other people's world. I'm in charge of me. I have to take personal responsibility for me. I can't blame anybody else. I can't blame any other thing. I can't blame drugs. I can't blame booze. I can't blame food. Whatever it is that those addictive tendencies come out that, that, keep, us, um, that keep us down and keep us in that victim state of mind, I can't blame any of those things or people. 
I have to take personal responsibility and stand up and put a stake in the ground and say like, I'm not doing that shit anymore. And this is a me problem. And that's a very, very tough thing to do, especially when you're considering reaching out for help. It's really, really hard to do that. And so in the beginning, um, it was tough to distance myself from people, but I had to do it. I had to do it to get a little little time under, under my belt and uh, to kind of get my bearings and get a foundation set, you know, and that's, that's been able to, to change and, um, you know, evolve and, and things change as time goes on and you can, you can re um, establish some of those relationships later on down the road. And you hope that some of those homies, uh, you know, are in a better place or, or they're, they're not doing some of the same things that they were doing that, you know, think you hope for the positive. That's all I'm saying. I'm not judging anybody or what they do or what they don't do or what they did or anything like that. I'm just saying you hope that you grow and you hope your homies grow too. That's not always the case sometimes, unfortunately, but you always hope for the best. I know I did. And, um, you know, so, so, so this person reached out to me who I've always had mad love for. Um, uh, but we, you know, we kind of went our separate ways at that time. Um, when, when I started making some changes and, you know, so, you know, he said, Hey, Hey, let's have some coffee, man. And, and so I got to the coffee spot, um, you know, and, uh, and I actually texted him. I said, what do you, what do you want, man? Let me, let me order. Cause I got there a couple of minutes before he did. He said, I want a mocha. I said, you're a pussy. <laughs> That's the great thing about those relationships, man. It, it's even though I haven't talked you know, we haven't talked in a while. It's just like, you know, it's just like it was that, that bond is there no matter what, you know? And so we can kind of razz each other and talk a little shit and have some fun. And, um, you know, I love that part about a lot of my homies that I, you know, that I've, that I've still been able to, to hold and build and grow relationships with. Let me take a quick uh, coffee sip here. So we get to the coffee shop and, uh, and we sit down and, uh, you know, we, we rap a little bit and kind of catch up what you've been up to. How's, how's work going? You know, how's, how's the family life, that kind of stuff. And, uh, just kind of general catching up. And, um, I had a feeling that, you know, that, that he, that he may reach out and, and he did. And he basically just said, you know, like, Hey, look, like I'm, um, I'm, I'm kind of tired of living the way that I've been living, it's been causing, it's been causing a lot of, uh, of, of turmoil and, um, and, and it's not good and I'm, and I'm over it and I just, I don't know what to do or really how to do it, but, um, you know, I was hoping you might have some suggestions maybe. And man, it was pretty cool to hear that, you know, it was pretty cool. And at the same time, like I told him, I said, man, like, I admire you, you know, setting this up and, and, and asking for help because a lot of dudes are scared to ask for help. I know I was. I was fucking terrified to ask for help. I don't want to be a pussy. I don't want to. I, I got this shit. I can do this on my own, son. I got this. You know, that's the thoughts. Like, I'm a man. I'm a man. I'm a grown little man, as Kevin Hart said. <laughs> I'm a man. Like I can do this. I can do anything. I'm tough. No, 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 no. For me, that ain't how it works. It didn't work like that. I was not tough. I was weak. I was a little boy stuck in a grown man's body. You know what I'm saying? Like that is where I was at, but my mind was, was running circles telling me things that weren't true. And I had no foundation set to be able to counter those thoughts. And, and it was, it was a tough thing. And so for me to even, um, nut up enough and, and, and gain the courage to reach out for help was a huge step. And so that's what I wanted to share with him was like, Hey bro. And I say this a lot, you know, Jess and I do newcomers that, at CR on, on Monday nights in Vacaville at the father's house. If anyone's in the area, come check us out, come check out CR. Uh, the program is amazing and a lot of good people, but 
That's one of the things that I also always make sure to say is like the fact that you just showed up here today, you know, the fact that, that you're reaching out for some help is a huge step. It's a huge thing because it's not easy. And most people don't do it, not because they're bad people or because they're stupid or because, you know, they're uh, unwilling or, you know, there's all, it's not because of any of the negative stuff. It's just out of fear a lot of the time, you know, fear and addiction. Fear and fear is always at the bottom line of everything when I look back on stuff and, and still till this day when I look at when I look forward and face stuff head on there's always if there's anything that's going on it's usually some anxiety some uncertainty and some fear like that's a huge thing and fear will just hold your ass down underwater till you can't breathe no more and you're willing to do anything it takes wailing and flailing and jumping and 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 doing whatever it takes to grab a breath of that love, you know, to come up and, and, and let me breathe again because I'm trapped in this fear and that is no way to live. It's not a fun way to exist. I don't even call it living. I just call it existing, you know, so I'm always aware of, of recognizing that when people reach out. And so that was one of the first things I wanted to tell, to tell my boy was like, man, I'm proud of you, bro. And then he told me, don't be a bitch. <laughs> Because <laughs> I think I said, I don't want to get all sappy on you, man. And he said, well, then don't. <laughs> and we were just kind of playing around and, and, and messing. But, um, but for real, I did have to come out and, and get serious for a minute and, and say like, dude, like, I'm proud of you, man. Like, we don't hear that, especially as men a lot sometimes. We don't hear like another grown man. It's, it's weird. And, um, you know, at least it was for me in the beginning, man. I went, ooh, that feels weird, man. You're, you're proud of me? what do you mean, man? Like, like, you know, I'm married, right? <laughs> to a woman <laughs> just playing like, you know, um, but man, it's a good thing to support, to build up, to, um, you know, to, to encourage and we need that. And, and so, so from there, you know, that's kind of where it went. Some of the resources Well, here, here's some of the things that I've done that have helped me. Here's some of the resources that have helped others that I know. You got AA, you have NA, you have CR, you got refuge. I know I, I feel like a broken record sometimes saying the same shit, but I mean, these are some of the foundational programs. You have, excuse me, I just burped, I just burped right in the microphone. Might as well take a drink, right? Hold on. I guess I might as well give a little love to Anchored. Anchored Recovery Center, anchoredrc.com. Met these guys at uh, the Foundations Conference out in San Diego. Was it last year or the year before? I want to say it was the year before that we met them uh, out there. And um, speaking of foundations too, if you or a loved one is struggling and you need some help, you need some questions answered, I should have done this earlier, but we'll do it now. Um, foundations is a great company for real. We've worked with them for a long time. I actually have a meeting coming up with Carly here in the, in the next couple of days, which I'm stoked to talk about 2019 and uh, what's going to be going on. And uh, we've had a great uh, relationship with those guys. They have treatment centers, um, inpatient and outpatient all over the country. So no matter where you're at, uh, they also have a confidential and private line where you can ask some questions and uh, you can do that. Let me give you the phone number. It's 877-714-1318. Uh, and they can help you. They can help you or a loved one. And if anything, if you just if you just have some questions about what to do, where to go, who to contact, or you just don't know, you just you just need to talk <laughs> about recovery and figure some things out. Um, feel free to reach out to those guys. Let me give you that number one more time. It's eight seven 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 one four one three one eight. So back to um, back to the programs. Okay, you have all different types of programs. There's you know, do, do a search, go on Bing. I recommend Bing. I don't be using that Google shit anymore. Go on to Bing and search, you know, addiction recovery meetings in whatever city you're in. And I guarantee you a list of them will pop up there. Okay. You'll be able to find something. And that's the first thing. Like I, like I was telling my homie, like, you know, I could sit all day and talk about how I want to get sober and, and how I need to get sober. And this is fucking up my life here and messing it up there. And all these things are happening. 
but it's up to me to actually do the work. It's up to me to actually do the work. Now, now I did some of the work. The first step was, was, was admitting I have a problem and then reaching out for help. So maybe that's two steps, you know, or two things. Like, I, damn, I'm, I'm seeing some things that are not going right here and I need some help. And then boom, now I'm going to reach out for that help. I'm going to talk to somebody I trust, you know, that, that's been there, that's been through some, some things, you know, and if you don't have anybody like that, then maybe your first step is to find a meeting in your area so you can find somebody that you can reach out to. That's where this thing's at. And a lot of this, you know, see, and that's where for me, the pride and the ego started coming in, man, you don't need help. Quit being a bitch. You don't need help with anything. You got this, you know? And so all that stuff starts creeping in. Go, yeah, you know what? You're right. You're right, man. I'm, I'm a G. I don't need any help from anybody. I don't need anything. I got this. You know, and so that prohibited me from going to any meeting, from doing, and that doesn't work. I had to show up. I had to show up and go to some, go to some group therapy, whatever you want to call it. That is group therapy. You know, it's community. It's other people building you up. And the first step in that is reaching out, right? And then it's actually showing up. So as I kind of laid some of these out for him and said, hey, you know, we do CR Monday nights. You got the Alano Club. You know, you have these options and that's that old saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. Classic. Uh, if you haven't heard that, I'd be absolutely shocked. I think my dad used to say it to me. Yeah, you know, son, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. <laughs> you go, yeah, whatever, dad. Fuck you. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking, at least. I don't, I don't know if I ever, well, I, I think I did say that, but I didn't say it at the time. I was just thinking, that, yeah, whatever, dad, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. You know, whatever, mom whatever teacher, whatever authority, fuck authority. I don't need any of that. <laughs> it's that attitude, right? F the world. Like I'm, I'm saying F, like it matters at this point. I've already dropped numerous F bombs and I know I've been talking about, I'm going to try to stop saying the F bombs. Well, I'm trying, but I suck. But you got to show up. Okay. So back, back to, you know, our, our little conversation, um, you know, about this. So I'm laying out some of these resources and here's some of the things that, that helped me, you know, here's some of the options for you. There's meetings on this day, that day. And, and if you go, you know, for anyone out there listening who does the, the search and you look for some of these uh, programs in your area, they have schedules. And the other thing, you got to find a program that works for you. I don't sit on here and recommend you only go to AA or CR is the only way to go. Like that's what works for me. That might not work for you. Maybe it works for you. Great. I don't know. But you have to make that decision. And the only way that you're going to be able to find some sort of program, some sort of thing together is by stepping out and showing up and, and, and working a program and trying some new ones out. Try a couple of meetings out. You know, you, you, one of the worst things I did is I walked the, the first meeting. Seth took me to my very first meeting. It was actually right here. It's funny, man. God put us in a, in a place right now. We moved into this house last year and we're surrounded by recovery. Everybody's in recovery around us. We're finding out there's two churches back to back right on each corner and there's NA meetings and there's AA meetings there. And so I've been placed in this area, you know, where, and it's a, it's a great little spot downtown, but there's a lot of homeless people that go up and down the street down here because it's in downtown Vacaville, which is a great little spot. Um, you know, and at the same time, there is, um, a lot of people in recovery too. And it's funny how God places you right where you need to be. And that got me thinking though, in, in the first meeting that I went to was right here by my house at, at the church, right on the block, on the corner, right here on the block behind us. And Seth took me to that meeting. And one of the, the worst things that I did and it wasn't because I was trying to be a, a dick or I just, I just didn't know. I wasn't ready. Let's put it that way. I was not ready. One of the worst things I did is I walked in there and immediately I started taking fool's inventories. And I didn't even, that was, that's some recovery language, taking inventory at the time. I was just judging fools. I was just talking shit. That fool, oh man, he's jacked up. Oh man, she's, oh man, I hate to be her. Glad I ain't her husband. <laughs> you know, so like that's, I, I'm, I'm immediately separating myself from those people. And why am I doing that? Because it makes me feel better about myself. It makes me let, it, it, it enables me to lessen the impact or the lifestyle that I'm living. 
it makes it less hard on myself. And so what happened was I went to the meeting and I said, fuck, I ain't like these people. I don't need this shit. I'm out of here. Gone. And, and I, I didn't go back. I didn't go back. And so instead of, and I'm just trying to save some folks some time out there who are hearing this, like, don't do that. Don't do what I did. Go into that meeting with an open mind and an open heart and say, hey, look, I don't know what to expect because it's scary, right? Going to your first meeting, especially in public, in, in maybe it's in your community. I think, I think it was Buddy who said he used to drive 30 miles to go out to a different meeting because he didn't want to be seen in his community. So if that makes you feel better, do some shit like that. As long as you're getting to a meeting, that's what matters because it is scary. I get it. You know, but at the same time, you know, going into that and keeping an open mind, an open heart, and, and not judging, not taking inventories, knowing that there's a reason that you're there is huge. And if I would have done that out of the gate, I might have stayed around a little bit to open my mind up a little more. And, and I could have six or seven years, you know, in, in recovery right now and save myself a couple of years because I think it, I think after that very, very first meeting Seth took me to, I went out, you know, again for another year or two and continued the drinking and the drug using and all that. And that's when it got you know extremely bad. Um, but those resources are there and it's up to us to find them and, and to, uh, and to do the work. So, um, where am I going with this? T truth is, I don't really know. So I'm going to wrap it up right now. Um, reaching out for help, you know, back, back to our main, main topic. It's a scary thing. It's one of the first steps and it's a huge, it's a huge weight. And I, and I off of, let me say like this, the huge weight off your shoulders. I know from experience because that, that moment when, when I sat down and I said, I told somebody, I told Jess, I told my wife, you know, hey, I love you. Drink, drink the rest of my vodka. <laughs> I don't think it even hit me yet. And I didn't care. I don't even remember getting like intoxicated because I was so scared and nervous and like just ready to admit, desperate. But I said those words, those three words, I need help. And it was literally like the weight of the world just shifted off of me and just was lifted up. And it was like, oh, damn. That's what that feels like. Like surrender. Surrender. I don't have to do this anymore. I can't do this. I cannot continue to wear this energy, this burden, this lifestyle that I'm living. I can't do it anymore. I'm not designed to carry this shit. There has to be something higher to help me. And so once I did that, it was scary as shit, I got to say, because you don't know what's coming next. And then there's that full commitment aspect. I don't like to fail. What if I fail? What if it doesn't work? What if, you know, what if I hate it? What if being sober sucks and it's boring as shit? Those questions are normal. At least they were for me. You know, but here's how this conversation you know, kind of wrapped up with, with me and my homies was, you know, the, the resources, we kind of laid some of those out. And then, uh, you know, we had a good time. We, we got to talk a little shit a little bit more and have some fun. And then at the end, you know, the ball is in my homeboy's court at this point. And the ball is in your court if you're out there listening and you're early on in this and you're considering reaching out for help or you're you know, you're right there. And let, let me point this out too. This is just coming to mind right now. So my, my boy that reached out that we're talking about right now, okay, he doesn't even know that by him reaching out for help, this is how this works in recovery. This is how service works. This is how the domino effect works. By him reaching out, he was able to create conversation, not just between me and him, but between Myself now in a microphone because we have a platform here that talks about recovery that may potentially go out that someone else will hear and help them muster up some balls or some vagina to reach out for help. That's how this shit works. And that's what's so amazing about it is when we're open and we're talking about this stuff and, and we are doing the next right thing. Amazing stuff can happen. And so that's kind of where the conversation ended was, look, 
Don't worry about the future. Don't set expectations, restoring relationships, making amends for past stuff that you've done, feeling guilty, feeling shame. All that stuff will come when you work a program. The first step is admitting it and then asking for some help and then getting out to a meeting, getting out to a program, checking into rehab, whatever the severity is of your situation. And, you know, I don't know why I, I feel like I should probably add this right now too. I feel like I've, I've advised a little bit on this, uh, on this podcast. I'm not advising anyone on what to do. I'm, I'm, I'm really just trying to share what worked for me and what has worked for some others that I've been around. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a professional therapist or anything like that. I'm just a dude who loved to party and do drugs and drink and escape reality. And, um, you know, I'm, I've seen some things and been through some shit and I'm trying to share about it. So I just want to make that clear to, uh, to well, the, the podcaster uh, clearly stated that he, <laughs> that's not what I'm trying to do here, okay? Um, and at that, I'm trying to have a little fun with this. We got to find comedy we got to find comedy in the seriousness of life or life is fucking boring and it's, and it's, there's, it's too serious. I had a conversation with Seth as a matter of fact last night and I hope he doesn't mind me saying this, but we kind of talked about just, man, we've just been taking shit too serious lately. It's not that serious. It's not because one day we're going to die. Is it really worth it to walk around pissed off and serious and beating ourselves up and not having fun? You know, and it's not. Life is short. You know, so we got to do the work. You got to show up. You got to do the work that it takes to live a healthy, positive PMA, positive mental attitude, love it, lifestyle. Okay? Okay, 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 okay. I love you guys. I hope something my rambling ass said today might help somebody else out there. That's what this is about, serving others. To my homeboy, if, you know, that, 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 um, we met this week. I love you. If you happen to listen to this, um, stoked. Anybody else out there who, uh, who's looking for some help, uh, there's plenty of resources at thatsoberguy.com. Like I said, you can also uh, just look up in your area. Where is there a meeting? Uh, you know, what is in my area that can help? Or reach out to somebody who you know and you, who you trust. Um, and if you need help with any of that stuff too, um, you know, there's... Um, there is plenty of resources around you once you step out. I guess, what, what am I trying to say here? Once you get into community, you're going to find by doing the next right thing that doors will start to open. People, you will start to meet people. You will start to realize things. There will be things that open up once you do that and stepping out. And that, that is one of the hardest parts, but I'm, I'm here to tell anybody, if I can do this shit, so can you. Trust me. Just do it. Say, fuck it. I'm all in. I don't care what anybody thinks. I don't care what anybody says. I'm tired. I'm, I'm desperate and I need some help and I'm going to do this. I'm going to change. I know I can. I love you guys. You can connect with us on Instagram at real that sober guy and at Shane Raymer on Twitter. Um, yeah, I think that's about it today. So, um, man, much love, peace, respect, keep your blood clean.